Dripper. Uh, it's kind of a rainfall simulator, but as you know, rain has drops of all different sizes. This thing is designed to drip one size drop. There's these little tubes in the bottom, you can look at it. Uh, this is one size tube in the bottom, and all the drops are the same size. They're all falling at the same speed because they're the same size. And it's designed to always drip at the same speed. It's actually designed, I know this sounds weird to say, it's designed a little bit like a toilet, you know, how the water always comes up to the same level in the toilet again. That's how this thing works. It's kind of, I teach with this a lot on campus, and it's just it's a real big exercise in water and, and pressure and vacuum. There's actually a vacuum inside this air chamber in here, if you care, that's sucking air down into this tube. That's why it's bubbling. But that vacuum is helping it drip at exactly the same speed for the duration of, the, of any experiment you would do. So I've got this set. I'm going to stop the dripping. So I'm going to stop this dripping by plugging the air. It will stop while I prepare the soil there. So the idea is we set this drip rate to be a half inch in five minutes. It's a five minute test for each sample. We've got a giant one of these in our lab where we do four of these samples at once. I'm just going to do one at a time here. But the idea is so the water comes down at a, at a constant rate. It always drips at a half inch for five minutes, which, if you do the math, that's six inches an hour. Dollar bill is six inches long. So in an hour, that's quite a rain. But we do it for five minutes, so it's a thunderstorm. So the idea is we've got this. Where's the lightning? This five minute thunderstorm. We could be thunder. Yeah, we'll be thunder. You be the, the lightning. So. The big idea is we're going to test the soil with a five inch thunderstorm and see how it holds up. Just like if you went out and fit down a field and it's bare out there, let's just say this is what the test is, and a big rain came, what would that do to your soil structure? Would it melt it all down? Or is the soil in really good shape structure wise and tilt that's going to hold up to that? Uh, we had some pictures before, and we've got that handout where we showed the organic, by chance, that organic soil where a lot of the soil was still there after five minutes. And in the more conventional, where the soil is all beat up, same soil, uh, a lot of it melted through the sieves. Eric brought a couple of soils. This is kind of ideal. A couple of soils from two different places on, on a field. The fence row, which is kind of the ideal soil. You're not even hardly using it. Kind of, it's kind of like the native soil. So if you didn't use the soil, think of a brand new truck, what would it look like? And another sample here from further down in the field, where they've been, they grew soybeans last year. and. Two years ago, then wheat, uh, conventional plowing and fitting. Yes. Yeah, so it's just, just using the soil in a fairly routine way, but not doing anything to try to build the soil necessarily. So we've got a soil in a brand new truck condition, and a truck that's been used pretty conventionally, so it's going to scratch as dents. But we wonder how scratched and dented is it? Well, this test can tell us. Uh, first, I was talking before about dropping the soil from waist height. So I'm going to take the fence soil first, I'm going to drop it from my waist. And as I say, the New Zealanders claim that that much force is what would happen if you plowed. You flip the soil over. So that was the, if you will, the good soil. And this, watch your toes. That's the soil that's been used, used much harder. So you see it's hard. I'd have to come along now with a disc or some sort of a cultivator, a secondary tillage, kind of break this chunk up to be able to, to plant in it. Not a whole lot of soil, not a whole lot of loose, nice soil, uh, a lot of clumpy, massive. This is going to take some energy, some passes, some effort to get this into seedbed condition. Where this other soil, of course, as you might guess, this is over the fence line. It's just beautiful stuff. It's, it's, it's soil from heaven. But it, remember, it's the same soil, different management. And I'm cheating a little bit here, I've knocked a little more off. But you see when it falls and breaks apart from that same energy, when you, if you were to plow this, you get this nice tilt. Well, this is the goal. I mean, this is obviously what you wish your field was like, but you're using it. So your truck isn't going to be brand new because you're using it. But you'd like the truck to be very reliable, useful, and resilient so that it starts all the time. It's, it's, re it's reliable. You haven't, the door isn't going to fall off when you open it. So the idea is this is obviously a better condition for the soil to be in. Everyone knows this. It's even recognizable at a glance. However, like, we're, like I was stressing so much before with this, this testing, we really want to be able to put a number on this. It's so, it's so clear, yet uh, without a number, we can't say, for example, that our cholesterol, I mentioned bad, I guess I'm talking about bad cholesterol, 
is at 400. Maybe this is, maybe not 400, but 300 or 200. Not ideal, where this is ideal cholesterol. And we want to get back to that or move in the right direction. So we're wondering, is our management, are the things we're doing helping us get in that direction? Well, with the measuring, we can do that. So you can see the difference here. You can guess we're going to get a different measurement when we measure it. But it's actually neat to see it. Um, I'm going to start with, I guess, this better soil. It's closer. So in our lab, of course, we put 100 grams of soil on top of this sieve. And then we test it. I'm going to get this started. So this is the good soil. We put a single layer and 50 grams, let's say we measure in our lab. Got this fancy filter, drains real fast, fits inside this funnel. I'm going to put the sample side here. And the big idea is when that rain hits this, some of the soil is going to fall through that sieve and get collected in the funnel. The water is going to drip out, but the filter is going to catch all the failed soil. And all the soil has said, ha ha, raindrops, you don't bother me. That's going to stay on top of the sieve. And so then we'll be able to say out of those 100 grams, if we collect 80 grams, in the funnel, sorry, in the, in the filter, we'll say 20 grams was stable to this test, which is, as I say, a useful way to just to measure. So, I kind of mentioned before, and we'll start this stopwatch. Yeah, now in our lab, of course, we've got a big fan. They kind of move things so those drops don't hit the same spot every time. Like the other one ready in the meantime. So that's going to go for a couple minutes. We go for five minutes, as I say, a half inch of rain. We see how much soil is left. And this is, as I say, this is just, just a demonstration, so kind of bear with. Everything's not perfect, but we will see what, see what happens. So everybody can see, right, that that's, that's going to, some of the soil is going to melt away. Now, in ideal soil, most of it will stay. I, I cheated here. What I did before <coughs> is I used this larger sieve. How fine is this sieve? Right. So we define a soil particle as a particle of a grain, either sand or silver clay, whatever, that'll fit through two millimeters. It's about the diameter of a pencil lead. So if you have a single grain of sand that fits through here, you'd say it's coarse sand, but it fit, it's actually soil. It's not pebbles, it's not rock, it's actually soil. That's the cutoff, two millimeters. By, that's what soil scientists decided a long time ago. This looks really fine. It looks like, boy, nothing would fit through there. It turns out, the, the size we chose on purpose, this is medium-sized sand. So if I had fine sand and sieved it on top of this, fine sand would fall through. So silt is finer yet. Clay is absolute powder. Clay would pour through here like it was Niagara Falls. It's clay. This would even slow down clay, for example. So this is pretty coarse, even though it looks very fine. And this is our testing sieve, this medium sand. So what we do is we find, we sieve the soil, so the particles pass through this, but land on this. Then we shake it, and anything that will just fall through here, we let fall through. But what stays, we put in a cup, and then we test it. That's the soil that gets tested. The stuff that doesn't want to just fall through here, it's got to break under the influence of that rain to fall through. Of course, we have the soil dry so we can weigh it accurately, all that. How long is this? Okay, I'm going to go half time. I'm going to go two and a half minutes just to keep things moving. We've got 15 more seconds on this. So again, the big idea is a lot of this is going to melt away. A lot of it's going to stay. 30 seconds. So I'm going half, half the time. Let's stop it. Now I'm going to put the same soil that's been under, what, the soybeans and then the wheat. So pretty... You want two funnels? That's okay. Pretty conventional management. We'll do the same thing to this one. You'll see right away that, remember I had like a whole, a single layer across this whole sieve. I'll try to tip it towards everybody. Really, most of it's still there. The soil's in good shape. We'd expect that. Uh, so the beating action is a standard amount leaves most of the soil behind. So we'd say greater than 50% of it's still left. Of course, in the laboratory, we'd, we'd dry it in an oven, weigh it, weigh what's down here in the filter after the water drains out, after we dried it. And that, that, 
this is our this is our aggregate stability test. So what are we really testing? So it's these soil crumbs. Remember, it's the same soil, but something has glued. I'm guessing we're going to get a different result. Uh, has glued these particles to get together better than when we use the soil hard. Well, what remember we were talking before about what those things might be? It's the Bacteria typically. Guts. Yeah, it, it's from life. As I like to say, life and death in the soil. 